less than 0.04% of the population will have a chance to see a 93% solar eclipse in a few days. And only 1.2% of the human population will have the opportunity to experience at least a 30% solar eclipse on March 29th. And I'll tell you how you can find out if you're going to be one of those people. We just finished a total lunar eclipse on March 13th and 14th, and as we all know, eclipses happen in pairs. And we didn't have an eclipse on March 1st, so that means on March 29th, we are going to see a solar eclipse. It is only a partial eclipse, but some parts of the Earth will be able to see a 93% solar eclipse, and that's dark enough to see weird shadows as well as significant temperature differences. And I estimate that about 98 million people on Earth will be able to see at least a 30% obscuration or more, and that's where the, I get the 1.2%. And about 400 million people will be able to see any eclipse at all, which is only about 5% of the population. But only 3.8 million people live in the area where there will be a solar eclipse of 80% or higher. And if you're one of those people, let me know. I'll go over how I got the population numbers and percentages later on in this video if you're curious. So how do you find out if you're in the path of the eclipse? First, timeanddate.com is your friend. It's super easy to use. There's also Javier Jubier's interactive map that lets you zoom in all the way to the street level. Hello, person's house. And finally, you can use Stellarium, my favorite planetarium map, the desktop version. And fortunately for me, I am in the eclipse path in the northeastern United States. And if I could predict clouds, I would be as far north as possible to get as much obscuration as I can. But for this one, I will try and see it from Boston. And for me, it'll be a sunrise eclipse. So the sun will rise eclipsed. That means I need to find somewhere with an eastern horizon. So I'm most likely going to the beach as much as I don't like the sand. And wherever I go, I will miss first contact and maximum eclipse for me will be about eight minutes after sunrise. So it'll be really low to the horizon. And the whole thing will end in 35 minutes after sunrise. So it's gonna be really short for me. And what that means is that this eclipse will be really difficult to see for a lot of people living in Canada and the United States. Aside from being really hard to see at sunrise, I don't think that a lot of people will prioritize getting out of bed on a Saturday morning early enough to go see a sunrise eclipse. And on the other side of the pond, people in the UK will get the best view because it's happening for them from around 10 a.m. to noon. And certain parts will see more than 40% obscuration. So if you're in the UK, you'll have a really great view of the eclipse and I hope you take pictures. And remember, in order to observe the eclipse, no matter where you are, you need a pair of eclipse glasses. Even if you're in an area with 93% obscuration, the sun is still too bright and it will damage your eyes, so don't risk it. I have plenty of videos covering how to spot good eclipse glasses and where to get them, so check those videos out. And if you're taking photos, then solar eclipse filters are also a must for your gear. You don't want to risk burning your gear. If you want to automate imaging, you can actually use ZNC or solar eclipse timer and controller to automate this eclipse as well. For me, with just 35 minutes of eclipse and already missing first contact, it'll be overkill for me. So I am just going to do it manually. But if you're in Europe, especially if you're in the UK, then you'll get the full eclipse from first contact all the way to the last contact of course there's no totality but it's still a couple of hours long and you can use set nc to automate that that imaging check out my videos on set nc i'll have those links in the description below they should still be very useful and relevant if you're not automating your images and you're using something like a dslr my recommendation would be to make sure that you bracket your images and that basically means taking multiple shots at slightly different exposures. Since we don't have totality, we are not trying to get an HDR image, but we're just trying to get something where the sun kind of looks nice. And depending on where you are, that could get a little bit tricky. So having something that's overexposed and underexposed could give you a wide range of images to work with later on. Most DSLRs and mirrorless will let you do up to three images in a bracket, but a lot of modern cameras will let you do five, seven, nine, or even more images in a bracket without having to use any kind of external software. If you're using set and see, that bracketing is kind of built in into the exposure table. So you can have as many exposures as you want in a specific, any single bracket. On my Canon T5i, which is an EOS camera. In order to set up automatic exposure bracketing, you click on this little Q button here, and now you can move around these options here. And we wanna be in this option that says AEB, which is automatic exposure bracketing. So you click on set. Once you're in this window, you use the wheel on top. So this wheel here, and I can go farther away from the center and that'll determine how many stops away we are from there in order to get darker and brighter. And like here is about one stop brighter, one stop darker and one stop brighter. And this is where I want to be. So I click on set 
Now we can see that there are like three lines at the exposure bracketing here. And my exposure is at ISO 200 and one one thousandth of a second. So if I take three images and I take a look at them, I'll see that the first one is one five hundredth of a second, which is one stop darker, one two thousandth of a second, which is one step higher, and one and one one thousandth of a second, which is what I was trying to take. So this will be my exposure bracketing. And looking at examples from last year's April total solar eclipse, these are some examples of what I can expect this year. So check your manual for what your camera needs to do in order for automatic exposure bracketing. You may have three or more options for your camera. And if you are going to take photos, a tripod isn't necessary, but it is a good idea for a steady platform, as well as a remote shutter or an intervalometer that can trigger the photos for you without you touching your camera. Tracking isn't necessary, but it will help, especially if you have a lens or telescope that has a narrower field of view. For myself, I'll be using my Skywatcher AZ GTI to do basic tracking. I won't bother with polar tracking or equatorial mode. I do have a Skywatcher Solar Crest that automatically tracks the sun, but since the sun will rise eclipse, I don't know how the Solar Crest will behave, and I don't have the time to test that, so I'm just not going to risk it. I know that my AZ GTI, if I just turn it on and turn on tracking, it'll just track the against the Earth's rotation, and it'll be just fine. It'll It's low risk, I know it'll work, and that's all I'm going to stick with. And if I didn't have that, I probably would have just tracked manually. If you take photos, I would love to see them. Check the description for an invite link to our Discord server where we have a growing community of astronomers and astrophotographers, and we would love to have you. If you've made it this far, I want to thank you, and I'll quickly tell you about how I got the population numbers that I mentioned earlier in the video. It's pretty hard getting human population numbers in any single part of the globe, especially in the Arctic where the population is very scarce. So after doing some research on population across the world, I came across a website called freemaptools.com to determine the population of the eclipsed area based on 2015 data. I believe the numbers are approximate enough that I can use in this video, with the note that the numbers may be a little bit outdated, but I'm mostly going for approximation anyway, so I think they work. And it's just to give you an idea of just the number of people that will be able to experience this without going anywhere. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know below. Thank you for watching, and if you get the opportunity to check out this eclipse, I would encourage you to do so. And I am wishing you clear skies.